Our next guest is retired Green Beret Joe Kent, whose wife Shannon, by the way, was killed in action fighting ISIS. And Joe is now running as an America First candidate for Congress in the state of Washington. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. We appreciate it. So, all of these efforts to make the military more woke, in your opinion, is it making the military more weak? Yes, I mean, it's obviously making the military much more weak. It takes the focus away from the military's core mission, which is to fight and win wars. The larger story here is it's not just the woke, it's not just the drag queen uh, story hour, whatever's going on down there at the Air Force Base. The larger story is how the Biden administration is using this wokeness doctrine, critical race theory, et cetera, to gain control of the senior ranks of the military and then to put in new ideological tests inside the military to gain a complete and total control and submission from the United States military. So he's using this woke doctrine as a test to see which leaders will virtue signal the loudest and adhere exactly to the woke doctor, and that way he knows who he can trust and who's going to be completely submissive to his agenda. That's part and parcel to what the Biden administration is trying to do by installing these political commissars like Bishop Garrison, like Estrada down the Special Operations Command. And that's to get a full control of the United States military because Biden's whole agenda is to gain control of this entire nation. He must start with the military. The military is the first part of that. What do you think, how do you think that affects military readiness? In what way? I think what it's doing right now is it's causing a lot of uncertainty and divisiveness in the ranks. So a good deal of the of the military, not all of it, the military is not monolithic in its thought process. You're allowed to have political views when you're in the military. Um, but right now, the Biden administration has pretty much said that anyone who supported the last president who was duly elected by the people of America, or if you're a conservative, or if you think there was any discrepancies with the last election, or if you think that BLM and Antifa shouldn't be burning entire cities, they think people with those views are potential insurrectionists, potential domestic terrorists, and they're actually putting in mechanisms and uh, gatekeeping efforts to figure out exactly who those service members are. I never experienced anything like that while I was in the United States military, and I just retired in 2018. So what this is doing is it's causing a lot of uh, people that are very feeling very unsettled right now in the ranks. And that, of course, hurts our readiness because now we're focused internally on picking par apart each other's ideologies as opposed to training for the next conflict, which is the military's core job. You know, Joe, um, I saw your uh, campaign ad uh, many, many months ago at this point, and I was um, fascinated by your story and why you have chosen now to run for office in the state of Washington. Um, fill folks in a little bit about that, your personal story, and why you're deciding now you want to enter into the realm of uh, serving. Absolutely. I had the honor of serving this country from the time I was 18 years old until I retired. Uh, after a 20-year career, I did about another year in the Central Intelligence Agency. I felt deeply compelled to go and serve this country. My wife, my late wife, Shannon Kent, felt the same way. She was killed fighting ISIS in Syria. She was killed a month after President Trump tried to get our troops out of Syria the first time. And that's when Secretary of Defense Jim Mattis and many other unelected bureaucrats turned against President Trump, turned against the American people to keep us at war, to keep these endless wars going on. So Shannon's death to me represents the failings of the permanent ruling class. And that permanent ruling class is alive and well within our government of unelected bureaucrats from both the left and the right. It also has corporate interests that absolutely deprive this country of our strong economic base. These are the same ruling elites that have had no issue shipping our jobs overseas, keeping these endless wars going on and on just to benefit political interests and to benefit major corporations. So seeing what happened in 2020, the totality of seeing our election essentially stolen from us by a cabal of technocrats and bureaucrats, all unelected, all supported by these corporate interests, the same ones that have hauled out our country, seeing that come to light, and then seeing the woman who I voted for, Jamie Herrera Butler, who's supposed to be a Republican, seeing her cross the aisles and vote with the Democrats for the sham impeachment, I knew I had to go do something because I have two young sons who lost their mother when they were both very young. And soon I'm gonna to have to look them in the eyes and explain to them that this is the country that their mother gave her life for. And the state that we're in right now, I can't do that. So I want to go and fight back against everything that the permanent ruling class is doing to this country. That starts with taking out establishment Republicans that refuse to fight for us. Well, I'm, I'm sure that your two young sons are very, very proud of their dad. And we thank you for your time here today.
Thank right. you very much. I really appreciate right. it. Good luck, Jeb.